Perhaps in the history of the most horrific events that have occurred on this entire planet, no single person stands out like Adolf Hitler. The event that he was instrumental in creating is called the Holocaust, and it happened during the years of World War II. Somewhere upward of 11 million people, and some have said 20 million, with numbers so large it is understandably hard to keep a precise count, were systematically tortured and slaughtered in one of the most well-documented events of genocide ever witnessed by humankind. People of Slavic descent, Jews, and Gypsies were primary targets, but there were many others as well. Six million Jews who were killed during the Holocaust later became a primary reason for the creation of the State of Israel, a land of safe haven, so the past would never again be repeated. Age did not matter. Approximately one million Jews who were slaughtered were children. Approximately two-thirds of all European Jews were killed. It is said that approximately 200,000 people were involved as perpetrators of the Holocaust. That's a lot of people in a killing gang. I used to have a Jewish landlady who was a survivor of one of the Nazi concentration camps, Auschwitz. I recognized her as such when I saw and touched her tattoo, a number placed on her arm to help the Nazis keep track of their prisoners. I used to talk with her about what happened. It was like talking with a living history book. But you know, none of this is new, and you do not need me to repeat what is readily available in any number of books and video documentaries. What I have for you today is something different, something very different. Historians have long sought to understand Adolf Hitler by tracing his past. They yearn to understand why he was the person he was, why he hated so many people, and why he felt it was so important to kill them. He was a man with charisma, of a sort rarely witnessed anywhere. He held a nation in his grasp like no other dictator before him. Historians know who his parents were, where he was raised, the house where he lived in, that he served in the German military during World War I, all that kind of stuff. We also know something of how he thought through his writings, such as with the book Mein Kampf, as well as with his many speeches. But to be honest, those historical records really do not tell us all that much about who he was on a deep level. Where did all that vitriolic passion against so many people come from? What I want to show you today are the results of a remote viewing exploration into the psychology of this man, Adolf Hitler. I am Courtney Brown, director of the Farsight Institute, the largest and most respected civilian venue for full public projects using remote viewing as it is done using U.S. military or military-derived methodologies. This project involving Adolf Hitler started out as an experiment. Normally, we use remote viewing to describe physical things such as events, places, and people. Remote viewing can be used to describe what is there and what happens, tracing such things across time and space in the manner of a detective, so to speak. But we have long known that remote viewing can also be used to investigate thoughts, the thoughts of a group of people, a collective consciousness, as well as the thoughts of a single individual. Not always the specifics of a thought, but the general emotional feeling and the general tenor of the thoughts. Now, linking these things together, the description of physical things combined with thoughts, and then tracing those thoughts to the events that serve as the deep origin of those thoughts and events was something new. It is sort of like using remote viewing in a manner comparable with how a psychologist would use psychoanalysis to uncover the root of a psychosis. And we have never before tried to do that at Farsight, but we like to push the boundaries of what is possible, to extend our frontiers to new realms. We have reinvented many a wheel, making improvements along the way, but rarely have our experiments led us to such unexpected and disturbing results as what I am about to show you now. Before I begin, let me give you a bit of background. Remote viewing is a mental process. 
It allows highly trained individuals to accurately perceive what are called targets, which are places, events, and people across time and space. People who use these procedures are called remote viewers. And when they are really good, they can describe such things in great detail without being told anything in advance about what they are assigned to perceive, a condition known as working blind. Now, there are only a few highly trained remote viewers in the world today, and they are capable of supplying perceptual data that are what some call scary good. Now, in early 2015, I enlisted the help of two gifted remote viewers who are among the best on the planet currently, Dick Algeyer and Daz Smith, to work on this new project. Both have long and public track records remote viewing for many projects done at the Farsight Institute, and both have done work that has been published in external peer-reviewed venues. Now, all remote viewing is done totally blind at the Farsight Institute. They were only told through a non-leaning email that there is a target and that they should remote view it. Nothing else. Now, as with all of our recent projects done at the Farsight Institute, this project is essentially a video remote viewing project. That is, the core data for this project were recorded using video, not paper and pen. Also, all remote viewing sessions for this project were conducted solo and live. There were no camera people, remote viewing monitors, or anyone else present when the sessions were being done who could have influenced the viewers when they were doing their work. Everything you are about to see was obtained solely by the remote viewers themselves, working all alone while they were working completely blind to the target. Remote viewing perceptions are essentially eyewitness reports. The better the eyewitness, the more likely that the eyewitness reports will turn out to be accurate. Remote viewing data, when done really well, can be very persuasive, especially since the data can be independently corroborated across multiple remote viewers. And much of the data can be compared with aspects of the known physical elements for a target. The viewers can also dive deeply into events in a manner that would not be possible for physical eyewitnesses. Now, it's also useful to mention that neither Daz nor Dick communicated in any way at all during the remote viewing phase of this project. And they lived on opposite sides of the planet, Daz Smith in the UK and Dick Algeyer in Hawaii. Now, I don't have much time today to go into much of the background of remote viewing and the phenomenon itself. So if you want more of that, I suggest that you go to the website for the Farsight Institute and explore what is there. You will find free instructional materials, lots of projects, and all sorts of resources. So what of the target for this study of Adolf Hitler's psychology? What were the remote viewers supposed to perceive? On the 30th of January, 1939, Hitler was giving a speech to the members of the German parliament, the men of the German Reichstag, in the Kroll Opera House in Berlin. In this speech, he said, and I will use the English translation here, if international finance jewelry in and outside Europe should succeed in once again plunging the nations into a world war, then the result will not be the victory of jewelry, but rather the annihilation of the Jewish race in Europe. That was a moment in which Adolf Hitler was speaking clearly about something that he would soon attempt to execute in real life. It is an unambiguous marker in the historical record when he identified a certain people and he stated what he considered to be a desired outcome, their annihilation. When creating this target for our remote viewers, I had the viewers first describe Hitler when he was making the speech. That was where we could record data describing all the verifiable aspects of the target, such as the building, the audience, and Hitler himself giving a speech. Here is an early picture of the exterior of the Kroll Opera House, the place where the German Reichstag met after the official Reichstag building was severely damaged by fire in 1933 under highly suspicious circumstances. 
It was inside of this building that Hitler gave his speech that is described in the target for this project. Here is a picture of Hitler giving a different speech, but where he is nonetheless addressing the same men of the German Reichstag in the Kroll Opera House in Berlin on the 11th of December 1941 while declaring war on the United States. We do not have a public domain picture of Hitler making the speech about the annihilation of the Jewish race in Europe. However, we do have a video of Hitler making that exact speech. Plus, we have another video showing a close-up of Hitler making another speech in that exact setting on a different day. I will today be a professor. When it the international finance judendom in and outside of Europe gelingen it should, the people once again in the world to fall, then will the Ergebnis not the Bolshevisierung of the earth and damit the Sieg des judendom sein, but the Vernichtung der jüdischen Rasse in Europa. Well, after locating and describing Hitler giving the speech, the viewers were then to move into his mind while he is giving the speech at the moment when he is thinking the thoughts about annihilating the Jewish race in Europe. And then move to the most significant experience that the personality of Adolf Hitler had in the past that would explain his mental state and ideas that he held when he gave the speech. This most significant past experience can be in any location and at any time. This part of the target was what was new for us at Farsight. I knew the viewers could perceive Hitler giving that speech, and I knew the viewers could perceive the general nature of his emotional state and even something of the tenor of his thoughts. We have done similar things many times before. I knew remote viewing when done by competent viewers working blind with a clean experimental design could do this. But we had never tried to use remote viewing to trace the origin of a thought. So when I assigned the viewers this target, I held my breath. Again, all remote viewing is done totally blind at the Farsight Institute. Again, the only thing that Dick Algeyer and Daz Smith got from me was a non-leading email saying that there is a target and that they should describe it. They had to find Hitler in the Kroll Opera House all by themselves. They did. And then, by the design of the target, I sent them into his mind, and there they went. They came out different places, each finding something that attracted them. Where they emerged made sense, at least to me. There is no single reason why Hitler was the way he was. And Dick and Daz together paint a picture that is as complex as it is disturbing. But honestly, it really is best at this point if I leave it up to them to describe what they perceived. Nothing is better than seeing and hearing something like this firsthand. But let me add one last point. 
Remember that remote viewing data by themselves cannot prove that something did or did not occur. But given how accurately these two remote viewers describe the known physical elements of this target, many may find these data to be highly persuasive. Okay, here we go. I advise you to hold on to your seats and be patient as our remote viewers describe in seemingly incredible detail why Adolf Hitler was who he was. After they present their data, I will pull it all together with an interpretation that I hope you will find informative. Let's begin with the session from Daz Smith. So target 14D. Okay, we have life, uh, emotional, male, uh, middle-aged, I feel, busy, occupied, purposeful, uh, emotional, emotional energy here. situation, anger, frustration, okay so a frustrated male, a middle-aged, it feels like a middle-aged male feeling a bit frustrated and angry uh, in an emotional situation, they feel well-dressed, educated, um, I feel like they're white or Caucasian looking, slightly tanned, healthy looking, uh, uh, feels like they're wearing formal attire, <clears throat> it feels like it's a um, suit and tie type thing, it feels formal, so the environment's formal. He's occupied, he's purposeful, he's a leader, people look up to him, uh, he's in charge, uh, there are people underneath him, teams of people around him, support staff, that's a good word, support staff, so he has support staff, so he's working, and he's working, uh, and it, he's involved in an intense situation. And he's working in a place, a location. Uh, it feels like a tall, multi-linear structure, which feels kind of like linear. Um, and it has these kind of uprights. It feels, which makes it feel a bit ornate. Uh, and it has areas that extend below ground as well. Uh, rims that go below ground. But it's multi-leveled, tall, central located structure, pale in colour, maybe even white. He's in there, he's working in amongst people, there are people everywhere. I feel like these are support staff, they're close to him. And they're all wearing formal attire, mainly male, but there are a few females as well. Very busy, very occupied, all have these different roles and jobs to do in a tiered structure. He's in charge, he's some kind of leader. Um, it feels like a C, it feels like a, it's not a CEO, but it feels like a CEO type position. Someone who's a figurehead, uh, male. Uh, he's, he looks healthy, photogenic. Photogenic is a good word. Uh, someone in front of the media as well. Um, yeah, healthy looking, smiling, but not at this occasion. Uh, at this occasion, I'm looking. At, there's a duality here. Actually, I've seen him smiling at times, but in this occasion, that I'm looking at right now. He's quite. He's heavily involved in something. He's uh, angry. I can. I feel. You know. I feel. I can see him pacing up and down like this, expressing himself with his hands. There are people around him. He's. He's quite intense in his energy, um, and it feels like it's some kind of plan or something. It went wrong. Um, so he's reacting to it, uh, there's a reactionary event here and it feels like it's a larger event, almost like a worldwide event. 
that he's reacting to, um, which has consequences. And this is playing on his mind, on his emotional state. I can feel this emotional energy in the air around him, but around all the other people as well. They're all very emotional here. Uh, he's healthy looking, but I sense that there's a underlying health issue. Uh, some pain or problems. It's not discussed. So although he looks healthy uh, most of the time, uh, in front of the media he's not entirely healthy. Um, he has some issues there. So anyway, he's, he's very emotional here. Centrally located inside a structure with lots of people around him. Um, and it feels like, let's see if I can draw or sketch these, uh, these people and stuff. The people around him, there seems to be a close-knit group of people around him. Uh, very close, actually, and he feels... Is he giving orders to him? Uh, actually, there's more than one close-knit group. There's several close-knit groups. Some feel like security. Some are protecting him. Uh, they're more on the fringe, but they're there. They're males, mainly. Are they all males? They feel like they're all males. So, we have our central life here. Oh, this isn't going to work now because of the words of metaphor. Let's try to think of it. Then we have a primary life. Here. Um, I see him in two different situations at the moment. Uh, I see him in a situation where he feels like he's in front of a table, which I see like this. And at this table there are people coming down the table. Quite a few of them. And maybe even some at the head of the table here. So it feels like there's people, these all feel like they're males mainly, all in formal attire. Uh, and it has all the pretense and feel of some kind of like business style meeting. So it feels very business like. But not exactly, it doesn't feel like a business meeting, but it does feel like a meeting. He feels like he's at the head at the table. Um, he feels agitated. Feels like he's expressing emotional anger or emotions towards all these people. And these feel like they're below him, but they feel like they're support staff. And they all feel like they have different roles. Feels like once the meeting's over, they're all going to go off in their different directions and do their planned Plan things, so it feels yeah, it feels like he's almost like giving orders. Give it feels operational, operational, instructional. He's saying what he wants done, and they go and do it. But yeah, very emotional, tense situation. Again, as I said, it feels very formal. These all feel like they're suited and booted, kind of dress, dress for business, uh, dress for professionalism. But there are another group as well. On the outskirts, uh, I see a few groups of males here, and they feel arranged in twos. And these feel like, well, they, yeah, these feel like they're very detached, very quiet in the background. And I'd say these feel like security. Um, some of them pass messages back and forth but they're mainly there as a support security service and around in the entire larger structure there are more tiers of people and these are kind of these are outside a main circle of events and stuff but they're here support they're all over the place on multi-level. Yeah, this is this is a multi-level structure, and they're 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 in the structure on all different levels. Um, and now this is different. This is a mixture of male and female. I see lots more female here, and they're very busy. They're walking around. It feels like there's lots of paperwork, lots of menial type chores, almost like business like office type environment. Doing lots and lots and lots of them. There are the support staff. So yeah, a big operation. Um, Big structure. 
males and females doing lots of stuff um, yeah supporting him and he's in this action uh, it feels like a very intense emotional situation bear with me a second while I go off camera here uh, just checking the time yeah lots of emotional energy very stressed uh, almost a sense of anger I almost feel like I can see this this it's primarily like hitting a table, you know, expressing his anger. Something's gone wrong. He's reacting to something and it feels like a situation. It feels like it's large. It feels like it's an outside one, a surprise event that he's, he's having to respond to. Something didn't go right. Okay. So let's see if we can try to pick up a bit more from the primary life himself. I think he would be a focus here for the target, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try moving his head a bit more as he is right here. And then we'll try a few movement exercises. Uh, so 14D and then we have, we have a life. He's emotional. He's male. Um, so we have. A, I'm not very good at drawing men. Uh, so we have a, we have a man, a male. I feel like he's wearing. Uh, he feels like he's wearing formal attire. And I would say this. It feels. It doesn't feel like formal attire from now. So it feels like past formal attire. So I would say, I don't know, formal tie for me. It feels like a shirt and tie. It feels like he's wearing a shirt and tie and sometimes a jacket with this. Okay, so. He's feeling emotional, stressed, angry. I'm inside his mind trying to probe this right now. I can sense the anger. Uh, there's a little bit of fear there, a little bit of surprise. He doesn't understand what's gone wrong. Um, he's trying to hold things together. Feels like there's lots of plans, lots of plans events. He's trying to tell lots of different people on lots of different levels what to do. Trying to be a reactionary to a situation that's occurred. He's in a high stress job. Middle aged, good looking. Very media centric, very good in front of the camera, photogenic, liked, loved, respected. I sense all that around him. He has a few, and I'm talking a very few, I would say four or five close people around him who were like a close knit group of very close confidence, uh, almost like a small council. A small council, can I put that? And they help him make decisions, um, important decisions. But he's very stressed at the moment, very angry. There's a situation slightly out of his control that he's trying to get back into his control. Very emotional. It feels like a white male. Feel educated, happy. Pain. There is a pain there. Hiding pain. I think he's in pain. I think he has. A, he's ill in some way. He's hiding it. Um, niggling, niggling pain. Oh, a bit like having a toothache or something. Always there, in the background. So he's stressed. He's hunched over. I can see him kind of hitting his hands like this, trying to make a decision. Trying to work out the best route forward. Highly stressed situation. Okay. So I'm going to try and move forward. See if we can catch him at a different time. Let's get rid of some of these lines here.
it's kind of weird because I'm feeling I don't like this guy at the moment. He's feeling a bit tense and his, his anger kind of worries me a little bit. He can go off on a real temper kind of tantrum anger thing, so I'm, I'm feeling a bit apprehensive about that. But I also sense there's something else with the guy as well. He can be quite amenable. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure what the right word is there. Okay, so we're in 14D. I'm going to try and move the movement. So I'm going to try and go forward. I'm going to try and go forward into the mind of the life. So here we go, 14D. Okay, wow, okay. Wide, wide. Airy, spacious, open. Feels different, yeah. Okay, he's relaxed. Very relaxed, very calm. Everything's very quiet. No, it's not, there's no stress. There's nothing. White. Space, calmness. There's no anger. In fact, There's not much emotion. Okay, this is strange. He's detached, separated. This feels weird. Um, I'm trying to express this. Okay, he's not here. I'm going to say he's not physical. I don't sense anything physical. I sense a cloudy whiteness. Um, detachment. Um, dispersed. That's the word I want to say. Dispersed. In all directions at once. Okay, so this place feels billowy, white, bright, glowing. He feels <laughs> dispersed amongst this. Um, it, it doesn't feel a lot. It doesn't feel like I'm physically in a person anymore. In the future, for all intents and purposes, I would say this person's dead in the future. Um, and he's relaxed, he's indifferent to everything now, he's calm. Uh, you're kind of looking back with a sense of pride for trying to do what you felt was right, but at the same time, a detachment. Okay, so this is weird. So if it was movement exercise into the mind of this, of this person, It doesn't feel right. It feels completely different. There are other life forms around him. He's central. Um, so if I try to draw him, he would be here and close by there are, there are a few life forms but they're oh they're weird they're dispersed as well everything is dispersed now this is weird I'm gonna try to say this as much as possible uh, easier as I can now or to describe it everything feels dispersed but at a moment, it can pull together, pull inwards, to a point. So it feels almost like a gaseous type substance of energy that's 
a cloud but a cloud that can be dispersed in a room or dispersed in a space but then something like an attraction pulls it all inwards and it becomes a point of light and a point of energy for a while before it then uh, changes form again and disperses again so it's <laughs> yeah this feels like an environment almost like a gassy gassy type environment where life forms are energy that disperse and come back and rejoin again in a it's not a solid form almost like a but a solid gas form so you're just you can be dispersed almost like everywhere but still be a form and then with and this feels like it's with intent uh, and some kind of action the disperse kind of goes oh uh, I might be able to draw this um, I haven't seen it well I haven't seen this before uh, it kind of no it's not right so they're dispersed and the dispersed points then kind of come inwards coalesce into point uh, yeah kind of coalesce into a point which becomes almost like a semi-solid form um, but it can have a bit of a shape as well it can have a bit of a shape of its original phys uh, of, a risen, uh, of a physical person this feels like a debt this feels I don't know what I believe, so it's, I don't know what I believe. So this is hard for me, really. This feel this feels like if if a person were dead on another plane of existence, like heaven or whatever you want to call it. This feels like what it might be like. This feels like this. This might be a life form that has died, uh, and some part of them is non-physical or in a non-physical place surrounded by other people that are or other life forms that are non-physical that can change shape and form and it feels calm peaceful bright white there's a detachment there's a knowledge of things that have gone before he he knows it there there's a trauma uh, when he looks back on his past there's trauma and it feels like a death event um, and there's knowledge and it feels like you can look back on this knowledge um, access it but there's with this there's an, there's an emotional detachment There are emotions there, but they're not, they're not his honed, no, not his, not his intense, is intense the right word? Um, they're not as real intense, um, it's kind of hard to put into words. Where we're here right now, where we're, you know, as a physical, as I am here as a physical being right now, emotions to me feel raw powerful and hard to control intense but he's in a place where they feel a bit more muted no because they can be as intense but I don't know they're different it's almost like there's a knowledge for detachment that allows you to have an objectivity towards your emotions. That feels better. So this is weird. So if I think this is a life form that if I move into the future from not too far into the future after the uh, their stressful time that they're in a different state. They're or they're somewhere else, they're in a different dimension, they're, something's different about them. 
They don't feel physical. They feel everything feels calmer. They feel maybe they meditate. I mean, this is close to a meditation feeling. When I meditate, this is very close to that kind of feeling. Feels like there. Feels yeah. It feels like I would be accessing a person in, in a meditative state. It has that kind of feeling about it. That kind of uh, oneness, disbursement, uh, happiness. Not happiness. Calmness, sereneness. Um, I don't think he's happy, but he's not unhappy at the same time because there's this detachment there. Um, it's almost like you can look back and see things happening as they're meant to happen in a way that it's bigger than you it's more out of your control um, so yeah I see a person in two states one physical state highly intense emotional angry surrounded by people very physical very real world into the future Completely different, completely opposite. Very surreal experience, very calm. Uh, as I said, he doesn't feel entirely physical there. It feels like, a, uh, yeah, some kind of dispersed, non physical place, but f still full of the things that make us human. The knowledge is there. Uh, it feels like there's communication there. You know, the your form can communicate. It can be. In, it feels like it can be in more than one place at once. Um, there are other forms there. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, I may have gone off target on this one. I don't know. I haven't felt anything or experienced anything like this before. It's very, very different. Um, the, as I said, the closest this other uh, state feels to me is um, when I'm in deep meditation. That's that's as close as, as I can say, really. If I I don't know what my beliefs in life are about an afterworld, this kind of thing. I I would hope that the universe does have these kind of things. Uh, they've been reported since the beginning of time. And from what I've read, this feels like one of those type scenarios. It feels like they're one of those type experiences of um, other dimensional, really. Uh, it feels like if, if the person over here in the past is in an intense physical, emotional situation, Moving forward, it feels like that changes. I can feel the change. I can see the calm. It just feels calm, going back and forth. Stressful energy, trauma, release, and then calmness. Okay, so this is target 14D, and I'm going to try to go into the mind of the life form for you. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so I get confusion. It feels like it's past. Um, it feels very strange. Feels fluffy, uh, confused, angry, regressed, repressed, repressed. Um, divergent, um, messy. Feels like a male in the past. Split. Angry, abused, abused. I can't quite put my finger on it. Okay, um, there's an anger there. I feel like this is an angry male. 
Uh, it feels different actually in the past. Um, so manual, doing something manual. Very strange. Um, upset. I can't call it split. Split personality. Is this someone schizophrenic? It seems like you have dual identity. Oh, hidden, hiding. Uh, not real. Um, feels like I see lots of hand movements. Feels like um, they're doing something very manual. Um, they feel younger, smaller, uh, in a different place, foreign. It feels foreign to me. Um, very strange. I'm trying to put my head on. It's almost like there's. There's two people fighting inside of this person. Um, almost like a Jekyll and Hyde type character. Uh, yeah, yeah, that feels right. Um, it feels like there's multiple personalities or something, or split personalities. Uh, I can feel a, a good side and an angry side. Um, Can't quite put my finger on it. It feels um, at the life here feels very confused, fluffy, um, messed with. Um, I want to see mentally, mental, mentally ill, mentally abused. There seems to be some kind of mental uh, thing going on with this life. Um, so angry, uh, upset, feels repressed, um, hiding something, being very secretive. What are you being secretive about? Let me see if I can explore that. What's fluffy? What's angry? Something's something's different with this life. Um, abused or something happens to them, or they're in a place where something happens to them. Um, so 14D and it's it feels that way. It feels that way. So it feels past, and I want to say angry, upset, and they're disturbed. I feel like they're in a situation that changes them. Um, and I feel like they're, oh, they're doing something, they're being secretive. Um, feels, in, feels foreign, different from where they are later on. Past, angry, upset. It's almost like a question mark of why. This might, it feels mental illness. Oh, hang on, uh, manipulated. Are they manipulated? Drugs, maybe? Maybe that's the haziness, the confusion.
I don't know, it's very strange. It feels like a person on a mission doing something. Um, it does feel some, like some kind of manipulation, some kind of mental manipulation or something. They don't feel quite right. And there's this repressed, there's this, something that's repressed sexuality or anger or something. Um, there is something that feels sexual. Uh, but I don't know what that is, it's like I don't want to go there. Um, I don't know, I'm confused with this, I'm not quite getting it. I'm, I'm finding it very hard to to identify with this with this life form. Um, if they feel very uncomfortable to me. But, um, I, uh, I can't quite put my finger on it. It's like they're hiding something, um, they're doing something. Something that uh, doesn't quite sit right with me. It just, I don't know, it gets my heckles up. I'm, I'm a bit, a little bit not put out, um, not alarmed. I'm wary. I'm a little bit wary of this life form. Um, they're doing something that's not something that I as a person agree with. Um, but I feel, I feel like there's some kind of manipulation going on and uh, they feel split. It's like there's two, two or more different personalities within one life form. Different life personalities in different places. Identities? Have they got different identities, maybe? Identities, more than one. Different ones at different times. But then I would say this with this is very well, it's a bit like an AOL of a spy or something. Um, or a criminal. Someone that's got different, yeah, different identities. It's very strange. Where I've landed up is different. This, uh, this life doesn't feel as assured as, 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 as the, he did previously. Where I am now, he feels different. Um, feels, uh, Younger, thinner, smaller, uh, feels less assured, and it does feel like he's going through some kind of problems, and it does feel like it almost feels like some kind of mental abuse or something. Uh, he doesn't feel quite right in the head, I can, and, and it feels like there's a pain, something causing him pain, something he's involved with, or something he's doing is causing pain. Um, uh, and this passes all through him, makes him angry, upset, uh, he's disturbed by something. Something he's experiencing. And this affects his personality. Uh, yes, I'm very confused by this. Uh, as I said, I find it hard to identify with this life as, I find it hard to connect. purposely so or a defense mechanism or something maybe of my own I don't know let's see if I can pick up anything else here so it's target 14d and I'm moving inside the person so there's confusion there's energy there's motion there's anger uh, this feels this feels past uh, different, uh, remotely located, but it feels like a different person as well. Um, smaller, younger, um, impressionistic. This person feels like oh, they're doing something. Their hands moving. They're they're busy. It's almost like manual. Um, but they're also hiding something. Secret, um, problems. And this all feels, this all feels strange. It feels, I want to say manipulated. Changed. Manipulated. Is that the right word? 
That feels mental. It feels like a lot of mental activity. Lots of thinking. Changing thoughts as well. It's um it's very hard to pin down. Torture maybe? It feels, it feels like someone It's gone through some kind of torture or abuse or something. Something's happened to them. Some traumatic uh, trauma. Trauma, maybe. Um, they've seen something, done something. It's, effect it's, it's affecting them. Um, and I still keep getting this feeling of personality, different personality, almost schizophrenic. Good, bad, you know, it's like two or three there. One really bad one, one really good one, one medium one. It's just like, um, it feels like someone where you don't quite know where you are with them. Uh, it feels like they have these uh, personalities or identities that they can slip into. Um, but this all, feel, again, it all feels manipulated. It all feels made or constructed or by circumstances or something but it all feels past um, something happened in the past different place such anger uh, hatred not hatred is not the right word that's too strong but there's anger and it carries through and yeah, I'm really uncomfortable with this person. It's a uh, there's a little bit about them that I find a little bit scary and unsettling. Uh, and it feel maybe it's because they feel uh, so different to me as a person. Um, they feel like they have yeah internal problems that carry through. Yeah, I'm very unsure about this person, um, this life form. Um, it feels like there's a past trauma or traumas. It feels like they're doing something almost like they're on a mission or something. Is it running on a mission? They're working. It feels past or a different place, foreign, working. And it feels, it feels like they're doing something with their hands, so it feels manual. This also feels forced, and it feels um, planned. Again, it feels like there's personalities. Uh, is it personalities? And yeah, more than one. Split. It feels like split personalities. Feels like there's more than one person inside of this life form. Um, depending on when you encounter them uh, and situations as well, they can. Some of the others can manifest. I don't know. I don't know. This is a little bit weird now. It feels like someone that's had. It feels like a life form that's had a trauma. Probably in the past, and that may have caused some kind of split, split personality disorder or something. Um, makes them unpredictable. Uh, I'm unsure about them. It feels like there's something there that is quite angry and can be brought forward. You a lot of temper, a lot of hatred. Um, this could be a very violent person. But at the same time, I see that there are momentary times when they're quite nice. But some of this feels planned as well. It feels like someone, maybe an abuser or someone along the way, has uh, instigated this. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much what I'm getting on this at the moment. Um, 
feels like I'm moving to the you know, a past foreign place, the foreign from where they are later on. But the person seems to have moved about a lot. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be any help to you. Um, as I said, I find it very hard to um, to connect to this this target and this life form. It's um, yeah unsettling to me. There are many interesting elements in Daz's set of perceptions for this target. Perhaps the most intriguing idea is that Hitler may have experienced physical abuse at an early age, and this abuse, possibly sexual in nature or perhaps having a sexual consequence psychologically, may have led to the anger that he held throughout his life. During World War II, and at the request of the American Office of Strategic Services, a predecessor of the CIA, Dr. Henry A. Murray, former director of the Harvard Psychological Clinic, reported that Hitler was indeed severely physically abused by his sadistic father, a father who regularly beat Hitler with a sick, often daily, sometimes dealing out 32 lashes with each instance. Hitler, who apparently loved his mother, may have been angry with her at a deep level for not being able to protect him from his father. This history of abuse seems to have been compounded by, or maybe even the cause of, a mental illness of some type, possibly schizophrenia, with dual personalities. Before interpreting these data further, let's continue with the remote viewing results. Now moving on to those of Dick Algar, I will return to try to pull all these perceptions together from both viewers after all of the results have been shown. SR41-36LH, go. Seems to be in a structure. I see a number of people. My angle is I'm looking down. So a group of people, quite a few people, a curving area that looks to be like a, I want to call it a stage. Someone on there, a focus of intention, some other people on the stage. So that's my first impression. Inside a structure, multiple humans, uh, other people, that seem to be on a curving area. Looking at these people, looking at this, trying to get a sense of this uh, structure again people, specifically one person. I get a sound of uh, talking, noise, room noise, a lot of uh, hum, voices, uh, hectic, noisy place, uh, a lot of people. I get a smell. The idea that comes to me is uh, fedora. You know how a hat has a smell? The inside brim of the hat has a certain smell to it, and that's a tr that's something pulling me onto this target. The smell of a hat. The word fedora. One of those brown hats that people would wear back in the nineteen. 50s, 40s. Um, so I have a sense that this is a people target, but I'm going to pull back a little bit, do a little survey, try to set the, um, find the area.
this would be land one I'm going to look at. And I see buildings um, a crowded street um, like storefronts uh, many people so urban area buildings street traffic noise mm. smell of car exhaust so there's vehicles here um, just looks like a typical street scene in an urban city area to me let me uh, so I was inside this structure get a look at this from the outside multi-story pretty big some type of a uh, couple of archway shapes that I seem to get um, sign I the word facade facade did I spell it right facade this building has a facade uh, somewhat ornamental but not too gaudy um, I see like a lighted sign um, can't read the words um, some lighted signs here uh, large entryway people here um, the turn marquee like that's a marquee on the facade archways open area big building multiple stories um, City sounds mid 20th century, not real new, not real old. Would have, it's been around a while. Um, brick and cement, metal, glass. Um, so that's my. That's my structure of interest. Let's go inside. I saw this stage area. I can hear this as much as I can see it, but um, my visual is like a big auditorium. There may be different levels. There seem to be, my vantage point would be almost a balcony, people up here, many people down below, noisy, crowded, 
raucous, uh, a high energy event, um, I get a sense of something on either side that's uh, lighted, bright lights shining here. Um, a central person here maybe at a podium uh, like it is like a stage there's other people on the stage there's other people here I get a male sense here a feminine sense a smell of perfume um, woman's clothes these people It's loud. It's um, some cheering. Some people are like um, affirmative noise, like yeah, yeah, uh, like a what they do at a rally or a political thing. I hear music, but the music is intermittent. I don't think the music is the main event. I don't think this is a musical performer, but there's music coming out at intervals as like punctuation. Um, uh, the music, uh, there's a theme song or something or some music that, uh, that gets the people worked up. And these people are worked up. They're animated, they're cheering, they're affirming things uh, there's this would be like a a speech or a pep rally or a, <sighs> might be political a lot of attention focused here <clears throat> This has a uh, serious feel to it. Uh, this is not entertainment. There's an entertainment aspect to it, but it's serious. It's um, I need to reset here. I'm getting a lot of conflicting things. This scene is so noisy and uh, there's just too much coming at me right now. I need to focus in. More on this guy that's up on stage here. Um, I feel like I should know him. I'm not ready yet to make a... These guys are buying what he's selling. If he was a preacher, they're going to believe his spiel. They're, um, they adore him. They're excited to be here. This is an event that, uh, I don't know if they paid to get in, or they might have needed invitations or tickets, but it was a hot thing. They're, they're happy to be here. They're happy to see him. Um, he has a lot of charisma and power over them. It's interesting because the other people off to the side of the stage, and he's in lights, focus of uh, attention, uh, noise erupts. He's, uh, I don't want to say playing the crowd, but 
not inciting the crowd, but they're reacting to him and he's, he knows how to get the response. There's other people off to the side that have phony smiles. They're, uh, they don't, they, outwardly they support him, but there's, um, God, they're, they're like mocking him. They're like uh, under their breath. They're uh, certainly jealous. Um, there's some plotting going on in the background, some intrigue. These guys are two-faced. This feels female to me, but there's... Somebody off to the side is uh, not happy with this, and yeah, the word plot, like plotting, um, get his due, have our um, revenge, have our have our time. It'll be our day. Um, but certainly he's a figurehead. Um, what happens next? This is a hectic scene. I hear footsteps jostling, men's voices, a murmur, noise, everybody talking at once, uh, voices raised, some voices not raised. Uh, my point of view is from right behind this guy, this is the central person. It's, he's being pushed through a crowd like he has bodyguards or someone leading him through, his feel is dazed, like he doesn't know where he's going, he's being led, he's following. Um, it's like um, someone is elbowing their way through a crowd and bringing him along. He doesn't know where he's going, he's just trusting them and following them. Uh, I see lights like news cameras, or flashes, old style. They used to have brighter lights that would blind you so you can't see where you're going. People are shouting questions. People are demanding things of him. They're coming at him from all directions. He feels um, a bit apprehensive and um, uh, 
overwhelmed. Um, it would be like you're a performer just coming off stage and you're backstage and it was real bright and now it's dim and the people are leading leading you through the crowd and people want to know things they're shouting questions he doesn't want to answer them he's like let's get out of here he's got assistants that are pushing their way through this feels uh, too intense he's um, it feels almost surreal. His consciousness is um, too much weight on him. He feels uh, psychedelic. Um, drugged and not drugged to the point of like uh, Valium lethargy um, like things are too bright too intense um, I get a sense of I don't know how to explain this. Um, I see an aura uh, around him that you can see sometimes, and it's not necessarily a, like an energy aura. People that are in the spotlight on a stage, they do backlights, and certainly in the, there's just this halo around him. But beyond that, there is a halo of pressure, like too much is weighing on him. He's got a decision to make. He's at a crossroads. This is more than life or death. This is, uh, the consequences are enormous. Um, it's a tremendous weight on him. It's a, like a... The whole world's watching the 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 weight of the world. The pressure is just uh, I can see it. It it almost has this like friction to it. It's hard to put it in words and uh, drawings, but there's some. This guy is powerful, but in a way he's powerless. He's um, fearless, but he's very afraid of something. Uh, how can you be fearless and afraid at the same time? That's the that would be the weight of of uh, responsibility, I guess. He's needs to appear bold but feels timid he feels swept along um,
I think it, uh, in that scene where I saw him, he was literally being led, like maybe even gently by the elbow, like through a crowd. But in a greater sense, he's also being led by forces that are greater than him. Um, he tries to have a great inner calm, but that's very difficult. There's too much pressure. Um, I want to follow him again. Explain this. Um, I see him now in a room, not very big room, but it's a, it's a it's a place that he's relieved to be because they came in out of the noise and hubbub in in through a door. It's uh, carpeted. It's very quiet. It's peaceful. It's a nice place. He's in a, like, he, you get a sense that he goes and, like, sits down in a chair. There's somebody that's maybe an advisor that's trusted here. They're talking um, quietly, calmly. Uh, furniture would be, like, very nice. Louis the something. Um, nice tables and chairs like uh, a really fine historical antique. It's my sense, nice carpet. Um, this stuff on the walls is like portraits, paintings, oil paintings, high quality stuff. Um, this has a feeling of an ante room, uh, ante chamber, um, a little sanctuary where he's having a quiet moment, um, like an alcove or a hotel room, um, a sense that there may be bedrooms nearby, but this isn't a, I don't know if it's a bedroom, it's, it's, a, it's like just a waiting room that he went in to get away from things. Um, there's a sense of relief, the adrenaline is wearing off, the, he can let his guard down, uh, he doesn't have to be playing the role anymore, he can be himself. Um, he's still uh, There's a sense of defeat. I get this dichotomy still of uh, power let, yeah, powerlessness, uh, triumph and defeat, um, a decision that has to be made, a very, very important decision. God, who, 
you know, I'd have like a world leader, president, um, king, uh, someone with great power, someone who I should know. Um, feels like 20th century. know if I had balls I'd name him I can't do it right now um, I'm afraid I'd go off in the wrong direction I j let me see if I can see him at a later time I, I see him old and frail. I see him weak and defeated. I see him with uh, regret. I get a sense of a, a secret that's untold, a uh, Deceit, I can't even spell when I remember. Deceit, DCI. Deceit, treachery. Um, regret, deceit, and treachery. Um, he made a decision or didn't stand up for a decision that was, that had vast consequences. Um, I see um, fire, destruction, buildings ablaze, smoke, ruins, people crawling out of ruins, um, like war, um, terrible happenings where buildings are destroyed and burnt and um, there's rubble and people trying to recover and there's been uh, there's been chaos he feels somehow responsible because of some Something that's been untold. God, who is it? Come on, Dick. Who is it? Who is it? Look again. I looked and I got a 
really uh, vivid but brief flash of something pretty hideous, um, like a ghoul with glowing eyes. I don't know if I believe in the devil, but like maybe the the devil just looking at me for an instant. Something with uh, really uh, scary looking creature. Um, not attractive, but big glowing eyes, and that's all I want to say about that. And then next, that transforms into and from the demon to uh, I see a skeleton pretty clear to me in a coffin and it looks more like a coffin. I see this shape really clearly, not a nice casket, a coffin. And it's um, <clears throat> it's very still, utter stillness and I smell earthy, rotting, Moldering is the word, I think. Moldering. Um, buried anonymously. Uh, I don't know if that's my guy that I was looking at before, but that's very clear to me that something at this target involves um, some death and someone buried in a. Well, let me look. A hillside, trees over here, rolling hills, um, a big tree here. I could draw this better if I took time, but I'm just, this is coming at me so fast. Um, I see grave stones. This one's like this. Um, markers here. A stone fence. The old, old stone fence. This is an old cemetery. There's grave markers here. There's a country road here. It's a small country road, like one lane or two lane. Um, trees in the distance. This is uh, not... Um, it's like out in the country, it doesn't feel famous. This. Uh, is a wall that's old rocks covered with lichen and uh, um, old, not crumbling completely, but not real new. A lot of gravestones. Um, you know, and it, it just feels kind of like I've come to the end of this one. Anything else? Uh, I 
can't quite name him. I just get this, he looks at this point in his life haggard. I get a sense of regret, loss of power, sadness, sorrow, treachery. Um, some weight or responsibility is so pressing on him. Uh, just like he had great plans and something went wrong. Something was out of his control. Uh, he would have liked it to have it turn out differently. Um, I think he's uh, wanted to be a good person, but events overtook him. Well, he's a leader. Was he a president? That's the feel I get, regal feel. Uh, maybe one of the presidents. He, uh, He took a secret to his grave. Took a secret. What's the secret? Um, I'm blind to all these targets. I've got no feedback. Uh, another something I worked recently had a theme of someone being given a deal that they couldn't refuse, like an offer they can't refuse. Like he got um, swept away by something that he didn't want to do, but he had to do it. And the results weren't good. The results were, uh, I would say, historically bad. If I talk for an hour nonstop right now, I might get it. I don't know if I've answered the question. Uh, interesting. I don't recall ever working a remote viewing target that had uh, so many conflicting Emotions, thoughts, uh, what's the word, uh, motivations, uh, such an inner, inner conflict. But uh, now I think I'm, that's all I'm going to get. Okay. How do we make sense of all of this? Clearly, many of these remote viewing results match what we know about Adolf Hitler. He was a man with a vitriolic passion and an extremely volatile personality. He was a angry and dangerous man. The remote viewing results that describe him as schizophrenic make sense. To some, he seemed to be a kind and compassionate man, while to others, he was the devil himself. As mentioned earlier, it also makes sense that Hitler may have been a victim of physical abuse when he was young, perhaps sexual abuse or perhaps physical abuse with a sexual consequence. That kind of trauma can affect one for life and its repercussions can indeed be wide ranging. These remote viewing results 
seem to indicate that this history of abuse did in fact have a causal connection with his future psychology, his behavior, and his hatred of certain groups, scapegoats to whom he could lash out punishment, driven by his own anger and repressed memories. If true, this would explain a lot with respect to his psychology. Of particular interest are Daz Smith's observations of the Hitler personality after death. When his consciousness was no longer concentrated in his physical body, dispersed as Daz described it, what seems particularly intriguing is the observation that the emotions become more concentrated when focused within a physical being. There is almost the sense that the mind of the physical Hitler that we remember was overloaded by the emotions that seemed to drive his personality. And what of this demon that Dick Algeyer perceived, however briefly? This too seemed to be a concentrated personality, and if it was a version of the Hitler personality, either before or after his physical manifestation on 20th century Earth, then it would suggest that the Hitler who we saw orchestrate the Holocaust may have been repeating past behavior, behavior displayed elsewhere at a different time. It is interesting to note that this demon personality that Dick perceived was also able to perceive Dick while remote viewing. It snarled at him and it did not look human, at least not in any traditional sense. This was clearly reported in one of Dick's paper sessions that preceded the video session. It suggests that this version of the Hitler personality was not human at the time of perception. Normally, humans cannot perceive when someone is remote viewing them. We have lots of experience with this. Humans just don't seem to be set up to have such perceptions easily. But this demon version of Hitler had no trouble at all perceiving Dick. The recognition was instantaneous. Thus, Dick's perceptions that quickly morphed from the demon phase to skeletons seemed to suggest that death, perhaps mass death, was something that the Hitler personality was all too familiar with on some level. It is often said that the best way to predict future behavior is to look at past behavior. Another way of saying this is that people tend to repeat themselves. Apparently, this repetition may occur in lives lived both before and after any particular incarnation on Earth. It makes me wonder if Hitler may have once been some kind of Darth Vader in a place far, far away from Earth. These remote viewing data do not say that explicitly, but they seem to suggest it is possible. At least, they make me wonder about it. Remember, we normally use remote viewing to describe physical events, places, and people. We know how to do that. Using it to develop a psychological profile of a well-known personality is something new. But we would never know if it could be done unless we try it. Now, such an attempt has been completed. As the years go on, we will continue to learn more about the remote viewing phenomenon, how it can be used, and what are its limits. We will also learn more about Hitler, his personality, and his life experiences. In my view, this experiment to use remote viewing to explore the personality of Adolf Hitler is both deeply disturbing, provocative, and highly interesting. I hope you also gained from watching all of it. This study raises as many questions as it offers answers. As I've said often in the past, keep an open mind. It is something we all need. I am Courtney Brown, director of the Farsight Institute. Thank you for watching.